A, you can see a loop grid on screen for a custom post type called food type, where I've got some custom fields showing you stuff like meal time serves. But it's the way I've placed the images and I'm using like a card looking layout, but it's all done within loop grid and it is simple and easy to do. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. First thing we're gonna do is use the advanced custom fields plugin, which you can get for free off the WordPress repository. It's a great plugin to use, but we're gonna be using the free version because we're gonna create some custom fields that we're gonna insert into our posts. But what we'll do is we'll create a custom post type first. So once you've installed and activated, go down to ACF, go to post types, and we're gonna click add new. I'm gonna call this a uh, food, you can call it menu items, whatever you want. Just make sure you go and do your title, your wording, not your title, your singular and your plural labels like that. So food, food, food. Let's go and create a taxonomy as well. So I'm gonna go down to taxonomy and then gonna click uh, add new and I'm gonna pick food type like that and we'll so it's food type again, and food type is the taxonomy key over there. Now the post type, this is important. We've created one for food, and if you blinked and missed it, the food post type is there. That is what custom post type is, okay? Advanced custom fields, before you had to go and get a different plugin to do that, now it's all rolled into one, which is why it's such a favorite with so many people. So there is our food, so we are now gonna say this, taxonomy or category is now sat inside the post type, which is food. If you want it to also be present in your normal post, you would go down here and then you would go and pick a uh, post. There you go, like that, which is not what we're doing at the moment. So just check that's okay. We got food, food type, and we hit save changes. We might as well just go into our food type and pick our taxonomies before we start creating our posts. So let's just put let's just put three in as an example. Wait, I'm not even sure what meals I'm gonna pick here. I've got some images <laughs> that I might as well show you. Let me just, so there's my three taxonomy items done. But if I go over to media, I have gone and collected some images in uh, like this. They're only 200 by 200. You probably would have had 500 by 500 if you were gonna show them on like a single post template as well. Uh, but I'm just going to just show you to them uh, within a loop grid. So I've just gone with 200 by 200. But I've got these items. They are, they're all circular. They're all done in Canva. And they're all a transparent background. And they're also WebP images. So they're only 17, 15 kilobytes in size. <laughs> Sorry, I should have mentioned that before we were carrying on. And let's go and create our actual custom field. So we did the post type within the taxonomy. We're going to go to field group. I, I would have preferred it if they hadn't called it field group. Just Leave it, left it as custom field. It, it made more sense to me then. We're going to create a new uh, field group and I'm just going to call this food items like that. And now I'm going to decide on what fields we're going to show. Now, normally within your post, in fact, let me just show you. If I was to go into food and I click add new in a new tab, it is basically like your standard post. So you can have your title and you will have your description, which you would have filled out. The custom field is the extra bit we're gonna add in, okay? So if we go back over here, here's the, I'm gonna go with text fields for most of them, except one of them will probably be a number because it will be a time field, but we're not gonna pick any time widgets down and we're just gonna pick a number one. Let's go with text for now. I'm gonna call this one meal uh, type like that. And there's my field name. That's literally all I'm gonna do with that, keeping it really simple. The next one will be, um, uh, we'll go with number. I'm gonna call this one time to cook. And I'm gonna go to the presentation tab and I'm gonna say append this with a value afterwards. So I'm gonna put a space and I'm gonna say mins like that. So you know that you're doing this with mins or minutes rather than hours. And I'm gonna add in another field and I'm gonna leave this. No, well, this one will be a number as well. And I'm gonna say serves like that. And that's literally it. So we've got two number fields and a text field, but the time to cook has an appended bit. You could also have something before as well. So you might wanna say, um, uh, you know, you might have something that comes up before the wording. I can't think of a really good example here, but you could have something before or after. The important bit though is down here where it says post type is equal to. You don't want it in post. You wanna click that and go and click food because that is our custom post type. If you don't do that, it will be visible in your post rather than the food one, which is where we want it. Then I hit save changes. If I now go back over to this post, which I haven't even created yet and I refresh it, you will now see that we have these extra fields appear. Let's very quickly, I'm gonna do the first one, call it hot bolty. We're gonna go with the meal type, dinner. Now, in fact, I should change this, right? 
at the moment, I've just got a free text field. What if, though, I was to go back over and instead of leaving it as a free text, let's go and hit edit. And instead of it being what we've just done, which was text, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go and pick select. Now, when I do that, it's going to allow me to add in choices. So let's go and add in a breakfast, lunch, and dinner like that. And now hit save changes. Now we go back over and I just refresh that and it's probably going to reload it, which ain't really a problem because I hadn't done much with the title. So hot bolty. Now I can pick. So I might go, right, this is dinner. If you want to have some control over what the users enter, and that's not a bad idea if you've got many authors and then you start to get typos and, you know, different spelling, that's a good thing to do. Time to cook. You'll see over here, if I just move myself out of the way there, you can see the word mins over there. So I'm now just going to go and type in a number like something like 30 there. And I'm going to say that this will serve uh, four people. And that's basically it. Of course, you do need to go and pick your image. So which one of these is even bolty? I don't think any of them are. Anyway, we'll just pick that image there. And I'm going to select Indian from my food type over there. So that is now added. I've got my image in and I'm just going to update that. That is how easy it was. But obviously, you would have added in instructions for cooking and other images and anything else you want to do within the standard, you know, classic Gutenberg-y, editory, thingy midgy. I'm now going to add in two more. Now, I'm going to do the same thing where I'm just going to add in different items in for, you know, the menu type or how long it takes to cook. So there you go. Peapot veg. Don't ask. Don't even ask what that is. Okay. I was like, what should we call it? What should we call it? And I just went for this name. So tortilla wraps and hot bolty. I mean, it's not even properly a hot bolty, to be honest, but it will do for what we got. So there you go. I've got my items in with custom field. Now we're going to go and add it to the page. And here's where I'm going to be very different with how we style it. So let's go to all pages. I'm going to go to this test page I have over here. And inside of it, I just have a container. I don't actually have a container. I have nothing in there. Let's add in a container. And I'm just going to say, uh, make this layout be about uh, 900 in width and give me some padding of about 100 just at the top and bottom, just so you can see what I'm doing here. Inside of here, we're going to drop in a loop grid like that. So there we go. We got our loop grid. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure it is definitely set to post. Now you are going to go, well, where is my food? Because my food is a separate post type. Don't worry about that. When you get down here, you'll see it over there. So you could, if you want, just go and pick it straight away there. It's in the query tab, okay? And the query tab is important if you want to include or exclude certain categories or items like that. So we've got our post. We are on the food. Now let's go and create our template. And I'm going to be different with what we're going to do here. I am going to go and add in a container, which is currently set as a column or vertical. And the first thing I'm going to do is just margin out everything like that, because I'm going to be very particular about my layout and how I want things to look. Then I'm going to go and drop in another container into here. So we've got one container parent and then we've got a child container. Again, I'm just going to zero out everything like that because I want to be very particular about the layout of it. I'm now going to also set the layout for this to be a full width. Now, don't worry. It is a full width inside of the parent container. So the child container, okay, in fact, I'm going to call it child container. Um, I'm going to call it child container ACF like that because that's actually going to contain our custom field. And then we're going to have an image which will actually sit outside. So I'm now going to just go and grab. You're probably wondering, what are you talking about? It will make sense in a moment, okay? So let me now just go and drop in the image as well. I want the image to be outside. So for now, I'm just going to lift it so it is outside. OK, and I'm going to pull it back in again like that. So we've got our container and we've got our image. OK, just make sure it, the image isn't inside your child container. OK, the image we're going to set to be a full. And I'm going to hit the dynamic tag and I'm now going to pick featured image. And that should bring back. Oh, it's going to put post. Why is it going to post again? Uh, I know why. I know why. It's not bringing back what I want. But let me just go over to my settings. Let me go to preview settings and the preview bit. I'm just going to go and pick food like that. OK, and let me just go and pick the bolty one for now. Even though you've set your loop grid or your query to be food, 
when you're building, don't be upset if your preview kind of goes and still brings back your original post. So that is now going to bring back our bolty image. I know there's a bit of a, doesn't look so great there, but we'll let that go. I'm going to set the height of my container to be about 300 pixels like that. So define your size of my child container. Now I'm going to start adding in the content. So I'm going to go and grab the post title, make sure you're on the child container, and I'm going to put the post title, and that will bring through the word hot bolty. Um, then I'm going to go and add in a heading field below. No, was that the text editor? Yeah, that was the text editor. Why did I do that? I want uh, a heading field. Like that. You could use the text editor. I'm being a bit pedantic here right now. Let me just rearrange that. I'm just kind of saying, just use the heading. Sometimes it's easier like that. Um, I'm now going to click the dynamic tag. I'm going to scroll down until I get to ACF field. Did I do that too quickly? Let me go back again. You got your heading. You click the dynamic tag. We're not going to enter in a value. We're now going to pull back our custom field. We go to ACF field, you hit the spanner or the wrench, and now you're going to see our fields. Um, ignore that woo one. That was from a previous different tutorial. So I'm now going to pick meal type, and that will bring back the word dinner. I could go to your advanced, go to before, and I could type in meal type, and I'm going to put a colon, and I'm going to put a space like that. So everything is in line, then I'm going to go to style, give it a text color. Let's just shrink it down to be an REM of one or something like that. And the weight we will make be, I mean, you know, you, you could decide on what you want to go for, but we'll go with something like that. So it's not too bold. In fact, we should go to the title and I'm going to just change the style of this a little bit. You, it would be a good idea for you to use the font clamp, in my opinion. Uh, clamp calculation. Uh, we have got videos on that so that you might want to make it smaller when you get to the mobile. But then again, maybe you're only going to have one card uh, when you go down on the mobile rather than having what we will have, which will be three side by side. So anyway, we've got that in. Let me just zero out the layout over here because we've got quite a big gap there. So we got, I'm reducing it down to 20. And once you've done it for one, you can now just duplicate and uh, duplicate. I mean, here the 20 is way big. So put it as a 10 instead, but go to our post tile and just give a bit more breathing space from the bottom there. I'll definitely go with another 10 to make that 20. Let's go to the second heading. This is really simple now. Hit the spanner or wrench, and rather than meal time, I'm now going to pick time to cook, and that will return meal time. Sorry, it's not going to say meal time. <laughs> we want to say time to cook colon space and then at the end I'm going to put in the word mins. Now why has it not put the word mins there? Because we appended it. That was for the post type. That was for what you see when you're entering in the details but now we're actually here we want to show something a little different. What if you don't like the look of it? What if you what if you're feeling like the title is now looking to you know like it's, it's quite strong isn't it in waiting? So I'm going to go back to my style and I'm going to drop this down to be a 300. But now my title looks too weak. Well, here's a trick you can do, okay? Because rather than having two separate fields, like I'm sticking them in line or side by side with custom width, because you want to make your title bolder, where you've got your spanner and wrench and you've got your key, uh, sorry, go to the advanced tab where you've got the before bit. I'm going to go and put in bold like that and then end it as well after the space and close off the syntax there. So now we get time to cook like that. So if you want, you can make it look quite, you know, unique like that if you want. For simplicity, let's just leave it as a 400 normal, okay? And let's now just work on our final one. Go to the spanner or wrench. This time we're going to go and hit serves. Go to the advanced tab, and I'm going to say this serves like that, colon with the space. If you don't do the space, then the four will be right up against it. Look, we'll see it in a moment. It's like that, it doesn't look so good. So we've gone and added in our custom field. Now let's just rearrange the layout of this a little bit. Let's go to our child container. Let's go and give this a bit of padding. I'm gonna go with about 20. What I'm also gonna do is go and give this a bit of a border as well for the entire container. So I'm gonna say, give me about 20 going all the way around. And I do think that sometimes for me, the shadow does work a little bit better. And I'm gonna increase the vertical to just have a bit of a two. And I am also gonna just drop the uh, the transparency a bit like that. Um, you can drop in some CSS to get like a glass morphism effect or something like that. 
So there we have our card. Let's go to my image, go to advance, and I am now going to say set this to be an absolute. The minute you do that, it is now absolute inside of that container, okay? So if I was to go over now and do that, it goes to the right of that container, not your entire page. If you want to put it at the bottom, you can see what it's doing. I'm going to go with left and bottom. Then I'm going to go and pick up my parent container. I'm going to go to my advanced tab and I'm now going to give this a little bit of padding. So I'm now going to say from the right hand side, give me about six, no, give me about 50 like that. And I'm also going to say from the bottom, give me 60. Because I, if, I give, if I go with 50, it's too close to the word there with serves with four. So already, can you see what it's done there? Let me just show you how that looks. Because that is why the image was not in the child container. It is now to the left and bottom of the parent container, but inside of there, we've gone and added in a little bit of padding. You could tweak and mess around with this. You could add some fur. You could add a bit of a gradient to this. You could add in, you could add in another image, you know, if you wanted to. But that is just a completely different way of doing like a, a loop grid layout in a way. And we're not finished yet. I'm going to click on the container. I'm now going to click on the actual parent container, go to layout, scroll down until you get to additional options. And then I'm going to pick HTML tag and I'm going to pick a link. And the link for this will be uh, basically go and hit dynamic tag and then just put post URL. So when you click that, it's going to take you to the single post template for that, which we have not set, but that is what it would do. And that's how it looks. Now, I have actually gone and shrunk my size REM to be, I think it was 1.7. I've shrunk my text down to be 0.9 REM, which is perfectly fine. But just because otherwise my text was wrapping. So depending on the size of your card, you might want to take that into account. I could obviously have just made this be a little bit wider like that if I wanted to. So even if I was on, say, a 1000 estate, I would have had more estate. And of course, don't forget that when you are in the loop grid, you can go in and modify the gap as well between your columns and obviously your rows. But that is, I think, a really cool different way of doing a layout. I mean, on the mobile, though, it's not going to look great. It currently looks like this which looks pretty atrocious. Our main container, have I got, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's why, because I added in loads of stupid padding. Let me just get rid of that and put in 20 there, 20 there, uh, 60 there and 60 there. So that is the style that you would then get on your mobile. And obviously you would have tinkered with it if you had to. But don't forget, I did also add the category so I could very quickly go and get the taxonomy widget, drop it in at the top over here. Say it applies to loop grid one, it's going to be using the food type taxonomy and I'm going to align it to the left. I'm not going to stylize this out, but you know, there's, you could stylize it out. The great thing about this is if we now view it on preview changes, by the way, I don't think I had, did I have a Spanish? Yes, I did. There you go. Tortilla wraps and then like peapot veg. <laughs> don't, I, I don't even know what the heck that is. What is that? Peapot veg, Indian hot balti or all of that. So Elementor, loop grid, taxonomy filter. It works pretty, pretty well. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And I hope this sparks some ideas with you. Take care. See you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. Have no shame, there's no time. Feel the pain, let the grind. I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it life. I never miss.